This one will be a bit about sympathetic magic and plants and botany. So, assuming that the world is indivisible and we merely create categories of the world, and following the authority of Porphyrius Malchus, that God's divinity does not contradict nature, we may postulate an axiom that every living being, every plant, every animal, is some form of an anima mundi, the world soul, drawn into it. That's why every plant in botany has certain qualities, not only the biochemical properties, but also magical properties, occult properties, an array of retinue of spirit attached to it. It has its own spirit, its own form of a botanical egregore, if you like to call it. So as an example, let's pick a rose. Not many know that animals stay away from the roses, not merely for its general uh, appearance or its scent and so on. But I once made a little experiment. I tried to reach for the petals of the rose and because I am magnetoreceptive, I can feel certain things in my very skin with a very weak, let's say, uh, biomagnetic shielding or soul shielding, soul craft, sahu, whatever you call it. The rose automatically bit me with thorns. I felt thorns bitten into my hands. So I decided, hmm, let's use the tonic parts of the plant. And I picked the thorn out, I plucked it, and I started chewing it. And immediately I felt thorns that were growing into my brain, beneath my skull. Of course, it's not enervated, so you cannot feel it. But if you have, let's say, magnetoreceptivity, you can feel things in your guts, in your uh, tissue, in your joints, in your brain, in whatsoever. So, this is an uh, apotropaic ritual. In other ways, you become as tough as the thorn. This is a defensive rite, in as much as if you take a thorn of an acacia and chew it and distribute it through your saliva, it's a shamanic technique, and distribute it throughout your body. You gain certain skills for quite a while if you are in good rapport with the plant and the spiritual retinue of it. This is just an aspect of it, a most occulted aspect. The other part is conversing with the, let's say, language of the plant. For example, Paracelsian site, sylphs, gnomes, vulcans, salamanders, nereids, they don't talk humanish. They don't understand humanish. So you can try to communicate with the spirit language by inclination, by your deeds, by your motives, by the impressions you paint with silence. Uh, you can create whole language based on uh, semiotical, symbolical ideas that are there for the landscape of the language of the gods, of the spirits to understand the ideas that you convey, the ideas that you're impressed with. That is very important. So, there is something called uh, passion. It's a passion for something, not lust, but passion. So, if you see people that are cutting down the trees, the shrubs, the plants, for example, gardeners, and they, do, they don't understand the sacredness of it. Of course, the work needs to be done. But they do it as if chopping it down, mechanical ways, in modern days. And I've been guilty of the same fault. I took a site and uh, I started cutting down certain plants with absolutely no respect towards them. Of course, this is without the proper wooden part. So this way it went. It was effective enough. However, Gardening and uh, trafficking with spirits comes with respect. You need to win respect. You don't get respect automatically. You need to impress the spiritual retinues of the elementals, of the plants with something, convey something that is interesting and then enter with the, within the communion, communitas or ecclesiastical of the given form. 
of an occulted degree of knowledge. Let us remember that learned magicians are not the creators of nation, not the artifici artificers, but they are merely negotiating in between, in between nature, in between the storms, in between gods, in between spirits. They are more of technicians of magic. And magic is a subtle art. It's like playing the Orphic Lyre, attempting to elicit certain emotions and some. And some are skilled in it, some are completely blunt. That is so. <laughs>